Welcome to the Dare Podcast. This is a successful mindset podcast, and I am your host, Miranda Braun. I'm so excited to bring you the latest tips, advice, and wisdom on how to create a successful mindset to manifest your goals in life and create abundance in health, wealth, and love. Tune in every month and then hit the repeat button to become the best version of yourself. Fiona, thank you so much for joining us today to be part of our first podcast recording, which is called Dare. And I think it's wonderful because this podcast is going to be about having genuine conversations with leaders who support our charity, which is the Miranda Braun Diversity Leadership Foundation. And you've been there with us from the very, very beginning as our patron. And you're someone who I admire and we have such a great friendship. I love you to bits. So I think it's an absolute honor to have you as our first guest. So Dame Fiona Wolf, thank you so much for joining us today. And I think it's beautiful that we're here. We've got to mention where we are, which is at the Wax Chandler's Livery Company. And you're about to become a master this summer. And I'm going to be a livery woman. So I think it's wonderful that we're here. And I've got my B badge. <laughs> so it's, it's wonderful that we're here today. And we can just share this first podcast recording together. So why don't you introduce our audience to a little bit about yourself and what you've done and what you're doing at the moment? Well, I'm here in Wax Chandler's Hall because it goes back to the medieval wax trade when we only had beeswax for candles. Um, and my background as a lawyer has been in the electricity industry for a very long time, going back all over 30 years when I was midwife to the National Grid Company, uh, which was a real honour. Perhaps not as much as an honour as it is to be your first podcast interviewee, Miranda. <laughs> I feel very touched by that, and I've been a, a big fan of you and, and the charity for, for a long time. Um, I've done a lot of um, work. It hasn't felt like work. It's just been about talking about and championing and analyzing what we can do in the workplace to let diverse talent rise across the piece. I mean, I started on gender yeah. uh, with the Association of Women Solicitors in the, in the Law Society when, you know, I joined, after I qualified, the biggest law firm now that we have um, out of London. Um, it was global, it's a Clifford Chance. Mm. And there were, there were me and two other women at that point. I mean, can you imagine? Yeah. yeah. And this was 1973 when you qualified. When I qualified, to sister, yes, yeah. that's right. You would have thought there would be a a few more took a while, yeah. um, but um, when I um, when I chaired it, it gave me a, a, a second leg to my career. Um, something that I enjoyed doing was to in engage with 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 young young lawyers of all sorts of descriptions and backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And now, actually, the the profession I'm glad to say is much more diverse. But it, it, there is never any room for complacency. Mm -hmm. Put it that way. Yeah. Um, when I was president of the Law Society, the numbers were astonishingly poor and were going backwards. So out of all the law firms that there were, only 25% of the partners were women. Mm -hmm. um, by the time I finished my year, it was, back, it was down to 23%. And I'd spent the whole year um, you know, promoting the cause yeah. and saying to law firms, look, actually, there are law firm practices in here that are not working. Mm -hmm and we could do better and you'll do better if you put in place things that enable people to develop their full potential. Yeah. They'll love it. They'll be more satisfied in their jobs and you will love it because they'll be more productive and happier. Yeah, and I, I love that how you've used your voice and you've spoken up, you know, even 50 years ago when you were qualified to be a solicitor, but you've done so much other stuff. You're being really humble now that like you were the second female Lord Mayor of London Oh, oh, well, yes, there was that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a small thing. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I love this statistic. I, 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 I can all honestly say I was the second woman to be the Lord Mayor of London in 825 years. Yeah. And it, the first woman was 30 years before me. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It was quite difficult to answer why it had been 30 years. Mm. 
Um, and, but, but anyway, we have more women in the pipeline now. Yeah, so we definitely to, do. And we have more women in senior leadership positions yes. in the city than we do, and certainly in, in, in law firms. So, yeah, people are taking the agenda much more, more seriously. But it has been an important part of my life. Um, which is why um, uh, I, I was so admiring when I first met you and wanted to be a part of what you're, you're yeah. doing. Yeah, and it's, it's, I think we've known each other over 10 years now, and it's just been a great friendship that's just grown and grown through the years. Yeah, so it it's better wonderful. And better. Yes, uh, totally, <laughs> totally. Um, so let's start at the very beginning. Like, where were you born and raised, and what were you like as a child? So I was born in Edinburgh. Uh, my parents had just moved up there from England, um, and Fiona was thought to be a um, quaint Scottish name. Actually, there were four Fionas in my class at school. <laughs> uh, but I went to an English university, and the trouble with uh, that was that that was English law um, and not Scots law. Mm -hmm. um, how did I wind up reading law? Well, it was a bit of a, an accident, actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's quite an amusing little story. I had been singing in the choir. Uh, after a rehearsal, I went to the, the pub in the village. Um, I was at Keele University. Well, the Sneed Arms in Keele Village was yeah. a place where we would go. Um, I ran into the professor of law who said, what are you going to do next year? Because in the first year, you had a complete sort of, you did a bit of everything. It was what the Americans call liberal arts, I think. Yeah. Uh, and he said, um, you need to make a, a serious choice. Um, if, if you'd like to come to the lec my lectures, you'd be very welcome if that would help you make your mind up. Mm -hmm. So I did, and the rest is history. So it was a half of Shandy bought yes. for me by the professor of law in a pub, and he recruited. <laughs> I think it goes down to all so connections and having those relationships. I, I think a lot of career advice and networks, all of that helped you to develop your own career journey. And it's, it's having the right people along the way to actually help you, give you a leg up. Don't be afraid to ask. Yes. Uh, and don't be afraid to accept help. That's something that I, um, I feel now acutely that I'm getting increasingly disabled with scoliosis. Is don't be proud about accepting advice and help. No, definitely. I think my motto is, if you don't ask, you don't get. And I <laughs> love the story. <laughs> that you shared um, on another interview you did, and I'd love you to share it here in terms of how you became a partner, because I think this is such good advice and a perfect example in terms of what you need to do if you do want to progress within your organisation. Yes, well, I was encouraged to ask for a partnership by my brother who said, if you carry on behaving like a doormat, you'll be treated like a doormat, which irked me. Yes. He said, just ask for it. He said the same sort of thing, you know, if you don't ask, you don't get. Mm. So I thought, okay. I went out with a client and the senior partner for lunch. Uh, on the way back, um, I thought, okay, we were walking around the Aldrich, and I thought, when we get to the Waldorf Hotel, I will have asked him about partnership. We got to the Waldorf Hotel. I didn't had, had the courage to do it. We're then waiting on the edge of the road. I said, by the time we get to the other side of the road, I will have asked him. <laughs> we got to the door of the office, and I said, there's something I have to ask you. Said, Do you think I would be made a partner anytime soon? And smiled. <laughs> and he said, oh. He said, Do you want to be a partner? Oh, well, leave that one with me. They made me a partner three months later. I love that. <laughs> Well, you've got to do that. I, a similar thing happens to me throughout my career when I wanted to move into the front office and I let everyone know what my career goals were. I think if you want your career aspirations and your career dreams to actually happen, you've got to let people know what it is you're trying to achieve. Otherwise, how are they going to help you? So exactly. I think that's a perfect example. So you and I are so much alike. We say this a lot, how we're so much alike in so many ways. And we're both driven, but yet we're both kind and giving, if I may say so myself. <laughs> I think you can say so. <laughs> I don't, I, don't, I don't know anybody quite like you who set up her own charity. Oh, bless you. Bless you. But you're so given, and you've, you've given so much of your time, um, you know, not just focused on your career, but also outside of your own career to help so many people. I mean, I consider you to be a great mentor as well as a great friend. You're like family. But what drives you? I, I mean, there are so many things that drive me, but what, you're clearly very driven. So what's 
what, what key things drive you? Well, I want to say um, it's, it's curiosity and the desire to make a difference. I mean, I think we all probably want to make a difference. It's, yes. it's so much more satisfying yes. uh, to feel that you, you actually did achieve something. Yeah. Uh, and, and I love learning, and I think I only really learn best when I am uh, challenging myself to go for something that's maybe out of my comfort zone. Yes. Um, when you're doing something that's, that's daunting and daring. Um, I love doing things that nobody's done before um, for the first time. Mm. I mean, when we were um, creating the new privatised electricity industry in England and Wales mm. back in 88 to 90, yeah. Um, I loved it that we'd never done this before because you could ask some wonderfully dumb questions and nobody expected you to know the answer. So, um, uh, and, and then once you have done something, you think, do you know, if I got another chance to do it, I'd do some things differently and they would be better. Um, and maybe the third time you're thinking, Oh, here we go again. Mm -hmm. You're looking for something new to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, you get the opportunity to bring the learning from the past to the, yes. the, the, the present. Yes. But, and what's also stimulating, I love working with other people in other disciplines. Yes. Um, because you learn so much from them. And it sets so much in context. Yes. And you see, you see the bigger picture. So, yeah, I mean, there's so much out there that we have yet to understand it. Particularly, I work a lot on climate change and sustainability. Yes. Um, unending um, thought and ideas that can be brought to bear to just make the world a better place. Um, where people are, feel they're doing the right thing and mm. making that contribution. I think so. What about you? No, well, for me, what drives me, I, I think it's, it's really coming back to the fact that I was born and raised in Leighton Stone, East London. And I was fortunate enough to have a mother that worked in the city, so I was given lots of opportunities and a network and introductions into the city. But what drives me is really giving back and to help others from my background to progress and to have the same similar opportunities that I've had. Um, and so that, that's what drives me from a charity perspective and from launching the, the foundation. But I think also, um, I, I'm like you, I like to keep learning. So I've had so many different careers. I was an investment banker, then a hedge fund sales trader, then a banking lawyer. Now I'm in the boardroom and I have a portfolio board career. So for me, it's just that passion to keep learning. I think that's what drives me. But you've mentioned sustainability in your work with climate change. And when I was a visiting fellow, I've just finished that at Oxford University. And I was, um, we've launched the Braun Review, which we're doing with the Miranda Braun Diversity Leadership Foundation. And it's on boardroom sustainability and inclusion. And I would love to get your insight in terms of what do you think we should be doing to get more people in senior positions within organisations and also within the boardroom to make it more inclusive and more sustainable? I think I would focus on the, and I have been for the last 10 years or so, um, the programme I started when I was Lord Mayor is still running under the name of the power of inclusion. Mm -hmm. If you're an electricity lawyer, everything's about power and transformation mm -hmm. uh, uh, one way or another. But yeah, this is, this is still running. But the, the important thing is, where is the talent coming from? And how do we let the talent rise? Mm -hmm. um, and the, the way in which I've been focusing on, on this is that you have to look at who are the keepers of the talent pipeline mm -hmm. and what you're asking them to do. And you're probably incentivizing them with targets, income generation targets. Mm -hmm you're not incentivizing them with talent development mm -hmm. targets. Yeah. And so they do what they're being asked to do. Mm -hmm. um, and OK, well, that's fair enough. I mean, we've got to make a, a, a profit. Mm. The economy d demands that, as we know. Yes. Um, but uh, actually, if they could just take a bit of time out and be encouraged uh, by their targets um, and by their employers mm -hmm. and their management, make a bit of time out mm -hmm. to help the talent develop because we all develop differently in different ways yes. um, and, and that's where diversity and inclusion come if we include it all together mm -hmm. we get a much richer mix mm -hmm. in terms of, of what where not just where the new ideas are going to come from yeah. but but how to get you know more done 
efficiently so that this magic productivity which is bugging everybody yes. when they talk talk you know big picture economics yeah. um, just gets better for everybody and then uh, and then people can also use their skills transferably uh, to go into other sectors it's uh, the, the workplace is much more um, flat in its structures than it was when I started it's no sort of mm. the hierarchy isn't isn't the same anymore um, and so we know and but we also need as you know to value difference yes when I was um, starting to become disabled um, uh, a, um, a young cadet came with work on work experience with me and we we met somebody who was disabled well actually um, we also met a couple of athletes from the, um, the Paralympics mm -hmm. um, and from from the the Gambia I think it was mm -hmm. a tiny team mm -hmm. uh, but they were struggling to raise funding mm -hmm. and she got very cross and she said but it's disability not inability yes and it's such a good motto it is so I love that so you've been doing such great work when it comes to disability and one of the things we've done at the charity is we've launched disability and neurodiversity scholarships as well but what I love about um, your work is that you started your diversity work focused on gender you've done you've been an ally to LGBTQ plus I'm a patron of pride and you're a patron of pride which is amazing but also when we launched this charity back in January 2016 it was because race diversity was the elephant in the room and there were so many people that were scared to speak up about it and so I remember you were one of the very few leaders at the time as soon as I mentioned it to you you were like yes sign me up would love to be a patron and you've been the biggest supporter and champion in terms of race diversity and working with our next generation and the time that you've given behind the scenes you've always said yes with anything we've ever asked so I just want to say thank you on air for that but the di the disability work that you're doing, I know now that you clearly have a visible disability now, and so you're really involved with lots of um, disability work. It would be lovely if you could share some insights in terms of what the work is that you are doing and how maybe some of our next generation might be able to get involved to help you. Yes, I think what I'm doing is to um, make some cases for um, disabled people on 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 a, on the basis that I'm a, on a, a learning journey myself, mm -hmm. and so I can tell people how it feels to be progressively um, disabled. I have uh, late onset severe scoliosis, mm -hmm. which gives me an S-shaped curve to my back. Mm -hmm. So you do look as a, as though you know you you are in a a, a pretty horrific position. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's amazing what you can do with exercise, I hate to add, but <laughs> here we go. <laughs> but um, uh, but the, um, um, uh, lots of people make assumptions about disabilities from a position of no knowledge, and my, my, one of my messages is to actually listen to a di disabled people. Every day when I jump onto the tube, jumping isn't quite the right word, um, somebody will jump up and offer me a seat, sometimes three people at once, yes. usually carrying lots of bags. And you say, well, I can actually only sit in one seat. I'm, I, you know, I love you all to bits, thank you for oh, that. Nice. Um, but, but, um, uh, so, um, but, but I think we need to focus uh, as much on the invisible disabilities. Yes. But, but the, no, the, the, it's, we are missing out on developing talent of people with disabilities if we don't pay attention to less to what they, they need but more about treating them as if they're just you know another person in the workforce with mm. with developing talent mm. and helping them to achieve their full potential in yes. the same way as we are with our on 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 gender or lgbtq plus yes. or or importantly because i think actually you know, race, minority, ethnic is still a big elephant in the living room, especially in senior places. Yeah. Well, I think everywhere is senior places are the ultimate. Mm. Senior executive positions mm. Mm. Um, are the nirvana. Yeah. Uh, but, but I think um, what's interesting is that you know, when I started the, the power of diversity, 
I think I got the name wrong. I think I should have called it the power of inclusion straight away because mm -hmm. it is by inclusive work practices, including everybody, valuing everybody. Yes. And everybody being helpful and kind in the workplace, that's a point you're very fond of making. Yeah, it's so important to be kind and, and there's nothing wrong with being nice. I think some people think you've got to be this aggressive, really? horrible person to get on and tread on people and backstab and you don't have to do that to get on. No, I think being helpful actually is, yeah. is, is, is a great place to go. <laughs> and understanding actually what, you know, the, the, the pressures your manager is under. Yes. Um, particularly when you're being, you know, they're being asked to do two or three jobs, only one of which is income generation. Yes. But, yes. but uh, you know, they need lots of they need lots of help, and appreciate it if you show show willing. One hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. So, last sort of question. Um, I mean, you've achieved so much, Fiona, throughout your career. And do you feel like you're just scratching the surface, or what, what else would you like to achieve? Well, you hardly expect me to <laughs> sound complacent and say, oh, look, I've done it all. The world is a great place. And I know, I, can I walk know. away from it. Yeah. The, the well, world there's still has, so much to do. There is so much to do. And I mean, I just think it doesn't get more delicious than this. Mm. There are so many things we can all get stuck into. Okay, it does actually require some daring, and you will talk about that in a moment, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, but, um, but my motto is get lucky and say yes. yes. People usually fall about laughing when I say that because mm -hmm. it's, it sounds flippant, but you can make your own luck. You can, you can work out actually what it, is, what it takes to be in the right place at the right time. Mm. Um, and saying yes, the serious point behind that is that you need to be prepared to get out of your comfort zone, mm. try new things, but yeah. know that you will have such huge satisfaction in feeling that you've risen to a challenge, yes. made a difference, uh, and you've learnt more, and you have more to give yes. next time or in a different context. Yes. And isn't that what life is all about? Oh my God, I love that. That is what it's all about. I mean, life is short. We're on this short journey. Mm -hmm. So and I'm, it's just a pleasure to be able to share this. With, with you and thank you so much for your time today with the podcast but we've got one final final question so of course well listen this thank you it's been a real honor I'm thank very you. touched thank you thank you so much so of course the podcast is our it's called dare our dare podcast and for those that might be wondering if they've missed the introduction it's dare is d-a-r-e the d stands for determination the a is the action that you need the r is the realistic assessment that you need to do in order to progress mm -hmm. but also having that resilience then the e is having the enthusiasm and the positivity so it's called dare now one of the things i love to do is say to people i dare you to dream big Mm -hmm. What would you dare our audience to do? I would, I would dare our audience to choose something that they're passionate about because I think, I think we do well what we're passionate about. Yes. Um, even if it seems, you know, way unattainable. And ask around and have a think about whether actually it's something that they could make a difference on. Yes. Because you never know if you don't, don't think about it. You never know if you don't it's ask. True. Very true. You never know if you don't try. Yes, I love that. That's so true. Well, on that note, thank you so much for your Can time. Can I ask the same of you? What, what would I dare? Yeah. I will just dare to dream big. Don't, don't take <laughs> no for an answer. Keep going. <laughs> like, I've got a whole list. I've got a book coming out, so a little plug. Okay. But the book will go into this in a lot more detail. Um, but yeah, I, I can't I, wait to read it. Oh my God, I can't wait to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much. You're amazing. Oh, I love and you, you too. <laughs> thank thank you. you.